الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد This is in response to one of our brothers in Islam may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and him to the truth and may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala grant us all forgiveness and guidance and bless us with ikhlas with thabat ala sunnah sunnah to nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam the first point i want to mention is that the importance of our intention that we do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the ma'amal biniyat verily actions are tied to the intentions when the malikul amr in manawa and everyone will get that for which he intended and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost tabarak wa ta'ala says wa ma umiru illa li ya'budu Allah mukhlisin lahu din and they weren't commanded except to worship Allah mukhlisin lahu din uh, sincerity and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the religion tabarak wa ta'ala so our intention is very important in everything that we do and I wanted to highlight a couple of issues and mistakes that I found from our brother because our brother accused us of several things and I'm going to very try to be as brief as possible. The first thing, the first accusation he said was that we misinterpreted the hadith that i misinterpreted the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and first and foremost when i read hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i take from the ulama and i take from the scholars of islam and the scholars of islam they are the warath al-anbiya they are the inheritors of the prophet or the prophets alayhim afdal salatu wassalam and they also the scholars that we adhere to they follow the methodology of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they take from those who came before them and those who came before them and those who came before them all the way up to the all the way back to the salaf as-sadi meaning the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in so this is the methodology we have to establish first and foremost uh the second thing the individual accused us accused me of was having black intentions as if they were to know and understand what is in the heart when in fact we strive to be sincere in our dawa to share what we have learned the limited myself as a tawailib al-ilm as a small student of knowledge who tries to spend his, his time in seeking knowledge that we always constantly strive to purify our intentions because as we know the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us in a sahih hadith in sahih muslim uh, in al awwal an nas yuqda alayhi yawm al qiyama rajulun ustushida ila akhir hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the first people the first three people in the day of judgment who will be judged the first one is the person who was martyred and as we're all familiar with the hadith and he allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him what he did He said he was martyred in his cause and Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala will say that you lied verily you did it for the praise of the people or so that they would call you brave and they did call you brave so you so he was dragged into the hell fire and the second person is a person who read the Quran memorized the Quran recited the Quran uh and taught the people the Quran as well as the alim the person who studied the religious knowledge but their intention the shahid or the point of the hadith is their intention was incorrect so they were all dragged into the hellfire so i was accused of black intentions and corrupting the hadith so we're going to deal with that and i'm going to try to be as brief as possible there i could write a book about the things i have to say about these issues but we'll try to be as short and brief as possible the third point uh i was accused of being a najdi salafi uh and i've been called wahhabi by many people and i'm not sure what a wahhabi is still to this day i mean i have an idea we are familiar with the term however i've never met a individual in saudi arabia or outside of saudi arabia who's called himself a wahhabi nor do i think it's uh, proper and appropriate to call yourself wahhabi nor should other people call you wahhabi but in fact they should stick with the sharia text 
and the names and the tasmiyat that are in the Sharia that were there from by Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and from the Salaf Asari and the, the Sahaba and Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhum Ajma'een and those who came after them from Ahl Ilm, Ahl Hadith, Ahl Athar, etc. And the fourth point, he said that I was uh, he didn't directly say I was funded by the Saudi government, but he said I was, you know, the Wahhabis or whoever, uh, and associated me with them, saying I was funded by the Saudi government. Of course, I have no, uh, my funds come from my work, and my funds, uh, you know, I buy my own books, and I pay for my studies, those studies which I do that are official studies, and those studies that are outside, I, I pay the taxi money to get to the sheikh and listen to the khutbah and so forth. So I'm not funded by anyone, and may Allah forgive us and him for these accusations. Let's deal with the more important issues. It's not about me and defending myself, but just correcting the record. But let's go to the issue at hand. So he seems to have a misconception. The first issue, he said the misinterpret of the hadith, misinterpretation. He said that is only this hadith about wiping over the uh, leather hoofs is only for the leather hoofs. So he said that this was a Wahhabi interpretation. So we're going to deal with that very quickly. Let's deal with the hadith first. An Mughirat bin Shu'ba radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala kuntu ma'a nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa tawadda fa ahwaytu li anzu akhufay fa qala da'uhuma fa inni adkhaltumuhuma this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith of Mughirat bin Shu'bah. And he said that as w I was with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he needed to make wudu. He made wudu. Uh, and then I, I wanted to, I, I tried to take off, you know, he was serving the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He tried to take off the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's khufain, you know, the, the leather socks that he wore. فقال, the Prophet ﷺ said Leave them because I entered them and I was in a state of purity Meaning the ritual purity, meaning he had wudu uh, Then the Prophet ﷺ wiped over them And that's agreed upon in Bukhari Muslim So we don't have any doubt about the authenticity And I think even the person, the criticizer the one criticizing, they even agree that this is a sound hadith. They believe they've accused us of misinterpretation. So let's deal with his comment. He said, only leather hoofs. Let's see what the scholars and what the Salaf used to say in regards to this. Again, these are not Wahhabi scholars, but we're going back to the Salaf al-Saleh, Radwan Allahi alayhim. So first and foremost, let's look according to the uh, Madhab of Imam Mah uh, Ahmed, Imam uh, uh, Imam Sahib al Mughni, Imam Maqdasi, Ibn Qudama, in his book, his basic book in the Madhab. So, this is according to the Madhab of Imam Ahmed. This goes way before Muhammad ibn the Wahhab and all those scholars who came after him, which is only a few hundred years uh, since. Muhammad al Wahhab was, was alive. But we're talking about now approximately 600 years ago, 600, 700 years ago. So we need to correct our facts and, and seek more knowledge. And the Prophet وسلم, you know, Imam Bukhari has a, a chapter. He says, So it's called the chapter of seeking knowledge or having knowledge before you speak and before you do. So don't speak with the tongue if you don't have knowledge. Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. Going back, let's see what uh, Imam uh, Maqdasi, what he says in this issue. We're going to try our best to be as brief as possible. He said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, uh, in the chapter about Mesa Khufain, he said, You Jews Mesa Al Khufain, wa ma ashabahuhuma min al jawaribi safiqa, alati. تثبت في القدمين وجراميق التي 
tujawaz al qabain fi tahara al sugra this is beautiful so he says that it is permissible this is imam maqtasi we're talking about 600 years ago this is way before ibn taymiyyah way before muhammad ibn al wahhab uh, ibn al qayyum all those scholars who you have something in your heart against and the way before the scholars that we take from in this day those who preceded us ibn uthaymin ibn baz uh, sheikh mukhbil uh, and others rahimahumullah ta'ala jami'an but let's see what imam maqtasi said so he said it's permissible to mess al khufain okay we have ittifaq on that wama ashabahuma min al jawarib as safiqa and what resembles them min al jawarib jawarib the closest thing to jawarib we're going to go let's go with the actual arabic uh, definition of what a jawarib is a jawarib is like a uh, like socks or basically anything that uh, that is in the place takes the place of socks that it covers your uh, your feet and uh, and so forth so let's see if we can find um, the issue of the the definition of uh, a jawarib so first and foremost that's the first refutation it lets us know that that we're not just talking about leather socks it doesn't there are those who say that only leather socks and this is the important thing is that we have to know that it's not about our desires and we should not be ta'asib we should not be blind following and forcefully forcing our opinion especially in issues of fiqh on others we go with the strongest evidence and if we know that Ahl al-Ilm differ over this issue, and they both have strong evidence, you shouldn't be so harsh with your brother or sister if they take the other opinion. This is an issue of fiqh. We're not talking about aqidah. We're talking about fiqh. So here's what uh, al-Jawarib. Well, jawarib mithla sharib al-an. So al-Jawarib, it's like what we consider socks in this day. And he says al-Jawarib, Jawarib ma yulbisu fi rijl ala hayat al khuf min ghayr al jild ka suf wa qutun wa nahwihima so he, he gives the definition and where's the definition come from lisan al arab we we're, i don't think we're going to have a dispute by going to the these very important books in the arabic language uh, an important dictionary like lisan al arab for the definition. So he's in Lisan al Arab, al Jawarib, it is what is worn on the leg, meaning worn on the foot, uh, resembling or in the with the characteristics of khuf. Khuf meaning the leather sock. So it has the characteristics of khuf. Min uh, Ghayr Jild. Other than jilt, because the hufain, they're leather socks. They're from the jilt. They're from the the skin of the animal that uh, you know, from the cow's skin or the goat's skin or what have you. Those are hufain. But al jawarib, as Imam Maktasi says, it's permissible that it, it and what resembles them. Basically, what does the same thing? It covers the same area. That is permissible to wipe open. Also, the Prophet sallallahu wiped over his hufain. He wiped over his his uh, also the sandals sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that's the first refutation of our our poor brother you know his his lack of knowledge may allah guide us in him and may allah increase our knowledge increase his knowledge that he should seek the knowledge and and, and seek the knowledge before speaking uh, let's see what the a'imma, uh, what they say. So we're going to make it ikhtisar. I have tons of books here that we can go through, but I think it would just take entirely too long. Let's just look at one brief statement. Fida kanat, the issue is here. Fida kanat khafifa, tura min wara'iha al-bashr. فعند كثير من الفقهاء أنها لا يجزي مسعى عليهما عليها. So in the with many of the fuqaha, many of them, that they say basically, whatever is covering your foot in place of خفين, uh, meaning other than خفين, that if it is too خفيف, that you can see your your skin, the color of your skin. Then many of the fuqaha, they say that it's not permissible to wipe over them. So one of the conditions, if it's whether it's leather, whether it is cotton, 
whether it is a wool sock, whether it is whatever, whatever that material, as long as it's a halal material, that you should not be able to see the color of the skin. Also, وَقَوْلُهُ So, the important thing, I f there was a, a statement I wanted to find that was related to what the, exactly according to the Madahib in relation to this issue, which illustrates for us that, uh, that wiping over other than the uh, chufain, as long as it takes place of the chufain, then it is permissible. Let's see. In the Lebesa. So let's let's find the the issue here. So that's the the first thing is that the fukaha, the scholars from before us, they dealt with this issue of it being what if it is a, a material other than the chufain, and that it is permissible to wipe over them uh, the other issues. Mas'ala jawarib. Here's the issue. ذَهَبَ قَوْمٍ إِلَى جَوَازْ مَسَعَلَ جَرَابِينَ وَهُوَ مَذْهَبْ عِطَاءَ وَالْحَسَنْ وَسَعِيدِ بِنْ مُصَيِّبْ وَالنَّخَعِي وَسَعِيدِ بِنْ جُبَيْرْ وَأَعْمَشْ وَالثَوْرِ وَإِبْنْ مُبَارَكْ وَأَحْمَدْ وَإِسْحَاقْ وَحَكَى إِبْنْ مُنْذِرْ إِبَاهَ مَسَعَلْ جَوَارِبْ عَنْ تِسْعَ مِنْ الصَّحَابَ Ali ibn Abi Talib, wa Ammar, wa Abi, Mus, uh, wa Abi Mus'ud, wa Anas ibn Malik, wa Ibn Umar, wa Bara ibn uh, Azib, wa Bilal, wa Abi uh, Umama, wa Sahl ibn Sa'ad, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum majma'in. That, there, there's the end of the argument there. So, many of the Salaf uh, held the view that it was permissible to wipe over those things which are not khufain, meaning jawaribin, jawaribin, jawaribin. Those things which take the place of khufain, that meaning that they cover the same area as a khufain. So as long as it covers that area, the furud, then it's permissible to wipe over. So it could have been made of cotton, could have been made of other halal materials. Who holds this view? Atta, wa Hassan, wa Sa'id ibn Musayib, all of these are the salaf. These are all uh, tabi'in, or uh, itba'a tabi'in. Wa nakha'i, wa sa'id ibn jubair. So they, these are people who study with the sahaba. Do you, are they wahhabi? Wallah mustan. Wa a'mash, wa thawri, sufiyan al thawri. Isn't that sufficient for you? Wa ibn mubarak, isn't that enough? Wa ahmed, imam ahmed, not, not sufficient? Wa ishaq, wa haqa an ibn mundir, ibaha mas'ala juwarbi. Ibn mundir also said that it is... Uh, related that it was narrated on more than nine of the Sahaba. Are you trying to say that the Sahaba were Wahhabi, Salafi, uh, Salafi, Wahhabi, uh, um, Saudi paid people? A'udhu Billah, what? This is, this is why it takes, it's very cautious, we have to be cautious about what we speak about. May Allah forgive us and you, I mean. The second issue that I have black intentions, that means that you have made a judgment to say that I am corrupt in the hadith, but again, I just gave you the sufficient evidence to deal with your argument that we're not corrupt in the hadith, but in fact, we're just trying to bring uh, knowledge first and foremost to ourselves and our families and then to the people sharing with what we know. The third point that you made, proof Najdi Salafis are manipulating hadith. Again, we just showed you, this goes back to the Salaf Asadi. If you have a problem with the Salaf Asadi, then you have a problem with your religion. May Allah guide us in you. And the fourth thing, funded by Saudi government, that's not even anything that we can begin to uh, discuss. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless, to bless us with everything good and forgive us of the evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.